Oh. Is it over here as well? Galagon? It's right in the end. Yeah, it might reach. Let's try that. Which way? This side? Yeah, this way. We're going to go play Galagon with John Champeau. I know you can't see us, but... Actually, maybe we should switch over so you can see us. One second. Let's just make it interesting for them. So they can actually just see us. We're on the move. Do you ever like, get the cable to go straight that way, like, across? Uh oh. And have it have it go that way? Like, go, have Paul go in the middle and, like, just have the wire go like that? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> that way you're not tripping over. So we're going around and then sneak it under when they're out. And we've got a meme in jump here too, so this is actually a good corner. <laughs> You're about to. I have. They probably have. Do you want us to get over it? That's perfect. Thank you. Okay, everybody, we're going to do a sync test. If you can see me talking, blah, 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 test one, two. Does it look like I'm speaking from a foreign film, or does it look totally normal? And of course, we have no feedback until you look at the Twitch stream. Um, I'll take your phone if... Um My fingerprint's still on it? Yes, good. Oh no, when you turned it off, disconnect from the chat. Oh, we're back on. Pause it. Video, but not very good. That's what somebody said. Oh, Thomas Jens is there. Oh, really? Oh, okay, good. That's good. I guess it's about 9 p.m. there. Yeah. Three frames a second. That's not bad. Maybe meant 30. Yes. I'd say it's set cool. Everything's good. Sound seems in sync. Excellent. 10 p.m. He can hear us. He's responding. Yeah. We're all good. Okay. So we can't really monitor the chat because of how crazy. Oh, it just turned down. That's a good indicator, actually. Uh, so we can't monitor the chat. Um, because we have a ton of equipment here that's not very portable. So excuse us if we don't respond right away to you. Oh, and Darcy is in the chat too. So I'm gonna get this back to you. Yeah. Oh, also you can see it there, not charging. Well, luckily there's a bit of charge. Game's too popular. <laughs> oh. No, I have not. Oh, wow. Okay. So you you'll have to tell us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You have to man that a bit. All right. Sorry. We're back. <laughs> I kind of wondering if maybe you want me to loosen it up a bit so you can turn it. Okay. Oh, did you see the Gallagher shirt? Yeah, I heard they sold out. Did they, they sell out really? I, I heard that. There's one on the table. Wow. I, I want one. Oh, it's pretty cool. So I'll have, I have to have, have a Wizard War one too, but they printed it wrong. Yeah, yeah, your brother told me. Yeah, but they'll be available in our 
our website that we're kicking off. Look at this, a little bit more, a little bit more. There you go, champ.games. Is that active right now? Um, you have to talk to my webmaster. Okay. Um, that's, that's my brother. Actually. So champ.games, you'll be able to find out all the information yeah, exactly. on the new games. Yep, exactly. So we're and, and get t-shirts. It's very, very it's rough, but it's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's something. It's there. So, yeah, we're starting. So yeah, we're I starting. definitely want that. So hopefully yeah. there's some, yeah, exactly. some it's mediums. Yeah, we just, we just bought like 12 to see if people were interested. And apparently they are. So, yeah, yeah, that's so. excellent. <laughs> so... Um, James finally made there's it. There's a so. tangent. Yeah, I made it. Uh, yeah. Coming in from Minnesota, uh, I'm on six hours sleep of, of two days. So two hours last night, uh, four hours the night before. Um, but I made it. I had to come. All right. Because of all these brand new, amazing games. And of course, John Champo is here from Champ Games. Hello, everyone. And we've got his brand new game, Galaga. Galaga, here. And let's yeah. aim that over here. So I'm going to be the cameraman and, let's see, there, yeah, that's pretty good. All right, all right, use an Aladdin joystick. I, I have wanted one of these, I have to it's save up for them. <laughs> Interesting, the, the ColecoVision one actually gets detected as a Guatari. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Probably because of the pin -out spot. Oh, just, yeah. It's a little weird, but it still works. Oh, that's still works one time. Yeah, I want like a... ColecoVision one, probably. I yeah. mean, I want a lot of them, but yeah, exactly. I ran out of room. Yeah, There's only exactly. so much room in my games room <laughs> for these things. Yeah. So. And uh, all the 5200s take up too much room. Yeah. They're huge. Yeah. When, I when think I've got like three or four of them. Yeah, I hope someone actually makes... Remember they had the 5100, which was just a, a, oh. a mini 5200? It was a prototype. Oh, my God. That would have been Atari amazing. Atari has that, but they never released it. So we need to get someone out of that. So exactly. The, the guys Somebody out there. Yeah, yeah get to uh, get some of those chips that yeah. emulate the hardware yeah. emulation. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, so we, we, we finally have it on cartridge. Yep. Yeah, it actually came out pretty good. Let's uh, show off uh, Dave's oh, right. uh, amazing uh, artwork. Is that is that in frame, Tanya? <laughs> Am I supposed to talk probably to bring it right in. Oh yeah, she's here. Yeah. There yeah. we go. It's autofocus, so it's all good. So there it is. So and a beautiful box as well. Yep. And Absolutely. when I when I get back from here on Wednesday, we'll do un the unboxing of Galagon. Oh, wonderful! On too. the stream, but you'll have one, and I won't because we actually sold out here. So none to take back. Home. Exactly. So James took yeah, my copy because I guess you didn't. Uh, you didn't get any sent to. This is like the first time. You've yep. Exactly. Seen it in first person. Off. Exactly. Actually, I was uh, my brother and I were putting together the uh, boxes and everything on Friday night. Else, so. Oh, it's wow. definitely a hands-on experience here. For anyone <laughs> yeah, that's interested, it's, so. it's very real. So, yeah, exactly. So. Everybody pitches in. Yeah, it was fun. So. so this is kind of the debut of Galagon, really. This is the yep. first place it's being shown. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, the final version. Yeah, I worked on it until Wednesday, believe it or not. Wow. Uh, so a few bites, and, you know, a couple of the minor nut bugs, a little issue that I found. Yeah, probably that only you will notice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, you know, once I found them, you know, my son and I played a lot the last week, this is which we were, and every time we found them, a little issue. You know, you yeah. Know, back to release can 8, 8, 9, 10, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Keep blah. counting up. Exactly. Yeah. But, and, you know, I was in communication with Al, who's driving up here, and he's saying, you know, I arrive in Portland in three hours, so. <laughs> that's all you have. Running out of time, so. And I guess that's the beauty of the way the games are put on the cartridge. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He can make them here. Yeah, like he did. burns them here or uploads them or flashes them, I guess. Right, right. yeah, yeah. Frank's here. Frank's going to be, he's got his own Nelly board, so. Oh, yeah, I've been thinking. He's actually made here. So, yeah, so he's up here. He sent me an offer. He sent me an Yeah, you know. Not in per like I have met him in person, but he didn't know who I was back then. Yes, exactly. But he sent me uh, a Harmony Encore because I was okay. having troubles oh, that's good. playing the big games. So yeah. I have to thank him in person. He's a good guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. Actually, yeah, they burned a couple of uh, Galaga Pal cards for it. Do you know the guy did a uh, Gibbon Dump, which is right here? Yes, so we'll be talking yeah. with Dion later. They actually literally just did that. Like, they actually peeled the cards and they did the heat gun and everything. So oh, my God. This stuff is hot off the press. Literally. Yeah. yeah. Or literally. <laughs> which, is, which is really fun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, so. that is so new and fresh. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, yeah. so the Jeff and Don Gallagher have been amazing. So we're really enjoying it. We got little kids playing it. Very accessible. So it's uh, yeah. very cool. We've got a lot of safe picks on it. So, uh, and the learning curve on Galagon is very, very simple. You exactly. shoot things exactly. and avoid being hit. Yeah, exactly. So it's easy to pick up. Yeah, same for which the board. Yeah, this one is, uh, yeah, this one is been, uh, been well, well received. Like yeah. I said, we've sold out all, all 50 copies. Yeah, sold out. It's all gone. Nobody yeah. can buy any more. Ever. And we're done. It was a limited run. <laughs> so how many copies were here? Just 50. So. Wow, that's... I'm worn out. I told him we had probably need to look 100. Right? He was, he was, uh, he was yeah. like, no. 
Yeah, yeah, we'll see. That's that's actually really good. Yeah, but yeah, that, he'll, he'll have been destroyed. Oh yeah, it's 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 yeah. <laughs> sure. So. By the indication of the selling here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they sold out yesterday actually, almost. Wow. Well, so so people with that came on Sunday like me are out of luck. Yeah, unless but you had uh, a, you know. a helper. Tanya was here yesterday, so she uh, yeah, she showed me. Oh, the, there's her hand. <laughs> <laughs> and you showed me the laundry list of stuff that made a buy. Yeah. Hey, what's going on? Gonna buy. Only missed two. Two two games. Uh, I'm gonna pronounce it wrong again. Cheddary. No, you yeah. Ch Chetri. I don't know how to say it. And uh, what was the other one? Hunchy two. So the only two I missed. Most of the other ones were new ones. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. It's good. So. So oh, you have a zookeeper in the back here. That's oh, that's, 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 that's what's fine. blasting away at us. Yeah. Okay. That, that one needs to yeah. Oh, it's good. Yeah, it provides background noise. It's like an arcade. <laughs> so, we, so we've got your new games here too. You're yep, actually we have in development. I, yeah, I have five games on the, this round right here. So we have Galaga, Gone. <laughs> Gone. Yeah. Gone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> waiting for there, but we'll keep it here. Yep. The landers on that side, we got avalanche on the side of there. So. That's amazing. Yeah. So. They didn't group, group them all together into uh, the champ teams corner. Yeah, I don't think they all. Yeah, the champ teams. I know. That's been kind of. That's kind of cool. pushing it a bit. I know. Uh, yeah. Taken away from our Atari. Game two. Actually, we yeah. have a couple of new things that debut on today. Is, um, we actually have uh, Ladybug and Hunt and Hunt are the box. Oh. The first time since uh, yeah, they released it. Uh, Oh my goodness! Can um, I yeah. buy the box? Just he, only, um, he will be oh, selling. I have a ladybug box. Probably not. I do. Do you really? Yeah, it's limited, limited copies. Oh, that uh, one from 2003, 13. Yeah, that's. Year. Yeah, this is the actual yeah. the champagne belt label. So, oh, oh, so yeah, it's different. Did, yeah, <laughs> collect so, them all, kids. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, yeah, we did that. There was never a box release for those. So. Uh, but Al will be selling the box boxes for those several ladies in the store out there. But oh, excellent. Them. I mean, he actually sold a, a box copy of the game. Okay. What was the other one? Uh, Conquest of Mars. Conquest of Mars, yeah. So. Yeah, I do only have the cartridge for that. So. Yeah, so that one. Yeah, it's kind of good. Cool. So he'll be selling those in half years. So. Oh, excellent. Okay. Yeah, yeah so definitely. Pick Brian that up. O on uh, Atari AT approached me and wanted to make a box. So I said, you can, but we're going to make it a little more pro. So uh, make it more professional. And on brand now? And, and official, exactly. Yeah, so. yeah with, the, with the Champ Games yes. logo. Exactly. Yeah. So we did that. We did, um, we did a lady. Oh, that's excellent. That's cool. So yeah, well, yeah, there's a lot of things going on. Right now, right? So, oh, yeah. It yeah. keeps you busy. Yeah, exactly. So, so let's... I've never, well, nobody's ever played Zookeeper, really, online. Or yeah. anywhere. No, no. This is the only place you can play Zookeeper. Yeah, yeah. Actually, this is in the league. Um, eat, eat your own Atari, right? What's your own? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I did the Strict of Blue. Yeah. Okay. And what's your name on Atari? Keith. 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 Okay. Yeah, I think I've seen that. Yeah. 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 He's a big Zookeeper fan. I'm already trying to buy him by uh, my game tech. That's I'm good. Like yeah. It's so close to Africa. It's yeah. good to have that range of people who really know the game yeah. and people who don't know it at all. Exactly. Like yeah. me. Exactly. <laughs> it's actually a really complicated game, so I'm not just doing it here to try to teach people. Like, you actually get a jump up here. It's not just run into them. Not <laughs> smack them. Yeah. Exactly. Not jump like on them. Yeah. It's not Mario Brothers. Right? Yeah, exactly. So, but yeah, I managed to get all three levels done for the uh, demo. I actually broke the uh, bonus stage on the plane right here. So oh my God. Luckily, there was a, it was a long play from Connecticut, so yeah. I had like eight hours to do it, and I had it. It's not perfect, but at least it's there. Oh my God. Oh. Yeah. yeah, we still have a lot to do, so yeah, we can show that one. I think people will get a kick out of the scene. People want to know where to get your shirt. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Sure. Well, um, yeah, I don't know if it's available right now, but um, yeah, we'll be on um, our website, uh, www.champ.games. That's a new... Uh, what do you call that? The suffix? Uh, uh, new uh, top-level domain. TLD. TLD exactly. So yeah. uh, my brother happens to work for GoDaddy.com. So he um, pre-booked um, yeah. this Registered Champ. Of games like a couple years ago. Yeah, because that would like yeah. Champ is like yeah. you're not getting Champ.com. Exactly. So yeah. we managed to get Champ.games. So and like, that totally uh, works because it's Champ Games. Yep. Champ. Yeah. Games. So exactly. That's why we're actually Champ. Games spelled P-O-T on Facebook. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's why I was wondering. Yeah. It's like whenever it's I try to type, all... it makes it a little bit harder, but it makes sense. Yeah, yeah it's all making it tough. So now that it's available, let's mosey on over if we can to Zookeeper, because we've only seen 
uh, videos yeah. of it. Yeah, and just like uh, animals shots. running around and stuff yeah, like that. No actual playing. Exactly. So, yeah. But, oh, wait, you. I'll do that. Uh, uh. There's a delay, too, so you have to like move it, and then it moves like oh, 10 okay. seconds. Oh, okay. That's funny. So. Okay, so. I don't know if Nathan's yeah. online, but I gotta give him a big shout out because he's been working for me for the last week uh, trying to. Um, he's been doing all the game testing, getting back to me, oh, getting me the graphics, great. stuff like that. So, uh, you know, him and I basically, uh, you know, the sounds, basically, uh, I'm using the ones from Robert Vieira. Yep. He did the original ones from the Atari version that was supposed to come out in 83. Right. So, um, these are just using that. Um, TJ, I want to, I think he's actually on the, he's on Thomas Yentz, he's on the, uh, Right now, right? Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah, so I want to say thanks to him because he helped me with the sound Let's driver and getting all that up and running oh. too. So. Oh, sorry. I'm going to... <laughs> need to get you like a little table or something. Okay. <laughs> I can get my brother to hold it up. He's got to have him do something. Yeah, we're at our extent here. So exactly. So. We'll move around the other side next time. Exactly. So, so I was just kind of moving it back so we can get a bit more uh, view. Okay, yeah, so Nathan did all, this, all the graphics, you know, this amazing title screen. Uh, yep. And then, like I said, I worked with Tom. He's the one who converted over those uh, sounds to begin with from 10 years ago. Wow. And then he <laughs> worked with me to help me uh, get the driver to put into this game. So, and amazingly, all the sounds just work, so there's nothing I need to do. So, yeah. I'm just integrating the game. So. And these, these are using CDFJ? Yep, yep. Uh, Bank switch, bank switching. Yeah, yep. exactly. Yeah, you need that for. Uh, so here's our first uh, run of a uh, newskeeper here. So basically, you're trying to turn around here, collect uh, the item that they appear on the top of the timer. Top, right. And then when the net comes out, you collect that. Then you right. Hit your animal, they go back in. Right. And then the thing ends. And whoever's in the middle, you get bonus points. Okay, so it's a timer-based game. Exactly. Now I get around two, and basically you can have another animal. You get a snake coming out now. And when you run around, it builds up the bricks. Exactly, and they, and they knock them down as they hit them. So you're trying to keep them in, but they do escape. And Eventually, when, yeah, yeah. And when they do escape, you just have to stay away from them. Exactly. And run out the timer. Yep, exactly. So, so you do have a pretty big jump. Oh, you can control it midair. Exactly. That's, that's pretty good for a game of this age that you can move midair, because a lot of the games back then, yeah. You jump and you're committed exactly. to that jump. Yep, exactly. So this, yeah, then you have the bonus level. You have the platform level here where you're basically trying to save uh, uh, Zelda on the top. That's your name. So it was actually Zelda in the, in the arcade? Exactly. You got, ah. Your name is Zeke, and then you're boarding these uh, uh, coconuts here. There's a lot going on on the screen. There you go. So a lot of flicker management. Yep, exactly. And then you go back to here, and now you can see... Uh, they're they get, loose. They're all loose. Yeah, you got camels coming out here. Yeah, so you get the net. Okay, but they escape immediately because there was no built-up wall. Exactly. Oh, wow. So this one's quite a jump and challenge. Yeah, you see this actually has the... Um, I don't know if you can see it on the Twitch screen, but it has the uh, that artifact that shows the bricks. See how the bricks are vertical uh, lines? Yeah, it, all, it looks almost 3D, like they're on top of each other. Yeah, it's exactly. like a really can, nice effect. Yeah, you can turn that effect off with this uh, switch here. I'll try to try turn it off. And then they just become solid? Yeah, see, like ah, that. So okay. people that are more sensitive to flicker, I know TJ is, so oh. you can turn it off. So it's, uh, this is a cool effect you can have if you want, but if you don't want it, you can turn it off. So oh, it's probably a little bit better to have it like this on uh, Twitch. So. Yes, yeah. yeah. Wow, well, yeah, this is a, it's a lot going on for a 2600 game here. So did you build uh, up from any other existing games to make this? Did you use any existing code? Um, well, I just use, uh, like, I use the same Flickr management yep. code, so that's basically it. So. Everything else was yeah, so right. different. Yeah, exactly. It's not this a shooter. It's no, this one's uh, it's not a maze game. No, exactly. It's uh, very challenging. It's almost three games in one. It's like uh, two. Uh, you saw two of the levels, which are completely different from each other. You know, one's a platformer. This is uh, kind of like running around, I'm just trying to stay alive. So. Yep. So are people able to hear us okay uh, and understand us? Well, general, general. Generally? Yeah, there okay. Are a few complaints, yeah. but it's hard. I think the video, it's noisy. The video's been very choppy. Okay. So they probably can hear you better than they can see you. So, okay. Yeah. 
well, well, it's not flickering at all. <laughs> that's right. It's perfectly it's static. It's solid. Yeah. Yep. And then you have and the uh, bonus tape here. Ah, uh, yes, I was just going to ask about that. So this is, oh, wow, that looks tough. There you go. Boy, so it's all, almost like uh, Moon, moon Patrol exactly. jumping over the things as they come out. There you go. So in this one, you're just trying to get to her. Yeah, yeah. and then as you progress, you got more layers that you have to go forward. And now the moves are, the moves are running wild. We're the moves are loose. Exactly. <laughs> they can hear you better than John, actually, oh, yeah. so I don't know if, if you just want to speak loudly. Zookeeper. I'll move it closer. Oh, we, 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 we have a fan here, too. Yeah. There we go. Uh -oh. I'll be equidistant. Exactly. Things get a little crazy at this level here. Yeah. So you've had a lot of practice. A little bit, yeah. Get the net, get the net. Maybe. Uh, oh, there you go. And you can see the... Uh, have a max of 16. 16. Yeah, I do have. Yeah, just about. Yeah, so I do have. I do have some plans to uh, reduce flicker um, using a multi copy when they when they're on the same on the top of box and going the right way. But I'm not using that right now. So. So they would be equidistant apart. Yeah, which is. Yeah, and they tend to move in the same direction anyway. So. Okay. Yeah, like these these guys here, the the rhinos there are kind of going the same way. So. Anyway, so so that's Zookeeper. I don't know if people can actually see that. I want to try to get to the... Uh, oh my god, it's destroying the bricks. One got caught the... inside like a uh, breakout. Yeah, it actually does that in the arcade. Yeah, so we'll, we'll try and get Al over here as soon as uh, he's talking with somebody right now. If you can hear me. Okay, he's right behind us. Ah, okay, dead. That was, that's crazy. Anyway, so that's that's what Zookeeper's looking like. So, so right now, 16 things can be like insane. And, uh, yes. and a bonus thing, so 18. Oh my god. Yeah, that's, so. That's way more than you've ever put into a game. No, exactly, so, and, but. And it's only made up of two yeah. player characters. So, it, I mean, it flickers, obviously, but it's not that bad. It's about as bad as Mavi gets when you get like 10 cats in the same so. Uh, I can't tell, but it looks like the animals are turning around the corners, so their feet are always on the bricks. Is that the case? Yes. That is correct. Yeah, that's how it is in the arcade. Right yeah, the exactly. So it's, it's closed, so they just turn 90 degrees, or is there like a... Uh, just take a look. Yeah, there, so we'll watch that guy in the corner. No, he switches completely. Yeah, that's what he does. That's what he does in the arcade, too. So, so there's four top, four different, well, two different types of switching so set uh, graphics for each animation, I guess. For yeah, example. exactly, yeah. So vertical and a horizontal. And then we flip them, exactly, yeah. Yeah, Nathan did actually, he did this last minute. We were at, um, in the um, demo that I posted a year ago, the uh, animals stayed, um, what do you call it? Um, uh, horizontally. Yeah, the whole time because of the multicolor thing, but he came out, he, I think he did really good. Oh, yeah, let yeah. me see the snake. Oh, yeah, wow. I mean, yeah, because we can only do one color change for a line, but I think I think he did a great job, so they, they, yeah. they look awesome. And for, for Zeke, we couldn't do that, it looked really bad. So Zeke actually, if, uh, he stays, he stays vertical then. Yeah, but we do do a, like a 3D perspective. See how he like oh, kind of runs up, and then he, he uh, sees the back of his hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. very so, smart. Well, he's, he's the master of grabbing. Exactly, and I think it's a great compromise. So. Oh yeah, yeah. That's and, it. and you always do have to compromise a little bit. 2,600 games converting from such a complicated yep. game to the arcade, of course. Absolutely. So, but yeah, it certainly plays like the zookeeper. So I think I think people will be pretty happy. Yeah. Hey, yeah, we want L. Exactly. Yeah. Are there people watching? Oh, yeah. yeah are awesome. Uh, Thomas Yens is oh, watching. Uh, hey, Thomas. Mike Haas. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, hey, Mike. How's it going? Yeah, Ice Posta. Yeah. Mike Haas. Nice. Yeah. So lots of new games, like, yes. like a lot of 2600 yes. games this year. Yeah, that happens a lot if I don't end up managing uh, some releases early in the year. They all pile up <laughs> yeah. for the PRG. In this case, I think there's 13 or 14 releases, and which most is, of them for the 2600. Which is good and bad because it's like really exciting. It's good. To have so many. Yeah, it's bad. awesome. And when bad I add the games sanity. to the store, then it's just kind of crazy in the wintertime. Everyone really wants to get their games for Christmas. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, so this is so close. So to there was Christmas. a big, you know, a big rush to build games for the show, and then in December, early December. It'll be the same thing, you yeah. know, Galagon, Wizard War, Amoeba Jump, uh, yeah. Aardvark, and all these other games to get them out to people in time for Christmas, at least domestically. People in Europe are not going to get their games in time. 
but no. I can't do anything about that. And speaking of Galagon, it sold out. Yes, yesterday. we sold out. It's been rare for us to sell games out at a show. Galagon sold out yesterday, and Wizard of War is pretty close. Wow. Dave Pac-Man's not far behind that. Oh, I bet. So that's, yeah. it's, it's awesome. That's an accomplishment. And there are a ton of Humber Rockets here today, too. Yeah, so they've I, been coming up to me. Yeah. I was like, oh, how come you didn't tell me? I would, yeah, probably, I would have prepared questions and everything. I, I only knew Dion was going to be here. And so I'm going to interview him later, but I'm like, people are coming up to me. Yeah, I mean, it's great that Dion uh, came here from the Netherlands. Oh, know, my God. Way, yes, I know. Yeah, that's really yeah, great. Quite a play. Ten hours. Oh, yeah, yeah, he beats me. <laughs> At least he has a direct flight on the way back, which is nice. Oh, wow, so that that's good. really good. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I mean, the, the show yesterday was absolutely made, and the booth was packed the whole time. Yeah, uh, Tanya was telling me. She picked up the games for me yesterday, thankfully. So oh, I have a copy of Galagon. Yeah. Good. Yeah, <laughs> you were lucky to get that yesterday. Yeah. Anyway, I know that people coming today didn't expect to sell out. I know. Yeah. So, <laughs> Sending them home sad. Pardon me? They're sending them home sad. I know. Yeah. <laughs> but they'll be online. But they both have to wait about a month before they get us. That's not too bad, yeah. No, well, a month to order them, and then it'll be a little longer. Yeah, uh, to get you gotta leave them wanting, right? Nice, right? You yeah. can't just give it to them. You know, you gotta hype it up. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's awesome to have these here. And oh yeah, you got Zookeeper. Oh my God, yeah, cutting edge, yeah. like yeah. last minute, like yeah. John, John actually has five. He's monopolizing five. Yeah, I'm systems. trying not to. Uh, yeah, yeah. Game. He's the taking Avalanche, over. Yeah. Uh, Zookeeper, Galagon, yeah. Wizard of War, and Lunar Land. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. insane. Yeah, and yeah. and so many new ones yeah. that like yeah. like Galagon is has never been on cartridge and. No. and I mean, Wizard of War was here last year, but yeah. Zookeeper's never been here. Yeah. Um, I think Avalanche was here last year. No, no. Okay, so that's no, new too. John did a lot of work on that. Amazing, yeah. cramming it into 4K with a title screen. Oh, okay. the, the splash, like Atari age splash screen. Oh, title screen. wow. The Safety too. 4K? Yeah. 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 So that, that one's actually done. So we said, yeah. uh, Alan and I are going to coordinate and get a um, label time yeah. going. Yeah. Very soon. Uh, okay. okay. so yeah. After it's crazy, this is done. Yeah. Is there going to be a box copy for Avalanche? I don't know. It's more of an obscure game. Yeah. So, you know, it's an old arcade game, and obviously Activision based boom on it. Yeah. Uh, that's so, true. it's kind of more, I'm sure a lot of people have never heard of it. So no. I've never seen it in arcades. I, definitely more people know about Kaboom than, yeah, than Avalanche, so it yeah. might be a tougher sell with the box. So, I think it'll be fine. That one just with the cartridge and, and manual. Yeah. And Lunar, Lunar Land are probably the same thing. Especially, there's also LEM that already does have a box. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. But Lunar Land is much closer, it's more like the original arcade game. Yeah, yeah. I think so too. Yeah. that's a fun uh, game. Yeah. Yeah. LEM three, but yeah, yeah. LEM more arcadey. Yeah, I mean, it's still we can still can land and stuff, but I mean, I can just fly them really fast. Yeah. <laughs> Lunar Land, not so much. I uh, know. Because Lunar Land, you rotate the ship too. Yeah, that yeah. LEM you don't. No, so you got the thrusters left and right and down. You know, the down button. Lunar Land, you can turn. Yeah. And then it zooms in as you close to the landing pad, like yes. arcade. Yeah, that's yeah. that's a big deal. Yeah, we had James play it. You played on your... Yeah, and I actually did okay, because I'm not very good at the rotating, yeah. and I usually do very bad, but yeah. I, I did really well yeah. with that one. More like Gravatar. Like yeah. Play yeah. Really yeah. 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 yeah, so it'll still be released, but like Alice said, there are only 4, 8K there. Yeah. They're taking special boards, so I'm assuming yeah. they'll be a little bit cheaper. <laughs> yeah, but okay. Box. Yeah, without, yeah, there will be melody-based games, so that'll be... Five dollars. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no boxes. Well, yeah. Okay. okay. Closer yeah, so and speak people louder. Can, yeah, it's hard for people to hear. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 it's very loud. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Definitely. Double your fun. But so many other new games are, are exactly. upcoming. Yeah. That's a great thing. Like yeah. Rogue yeah. Mechanic sitting there. Arkanoid for the 7800. Oh my God. Yeah. 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 yeah Arkanoid Rogue is one of those games that I wanted to write for the 7800. Oh yeah, it's just such a it. fun game. And how yeah. how is it? I haven't seen it. Oh, yet, it's great. So. And there's a pokey in that for the audio, like the music oh, is used in pokey. Wow. It's even yeah. that new pokey one. Yes, tell, board. tell me about that. that so the pokey one is a new audio. Well, the pokey that was designed for arcade games. There's a lot of Atari's arcade games. I think so. Oh, I was the pokey, one or more pokey chips. Right. Uh, so there's a big need in the arcade community for a place of pokey. So apparently they. they like out, you know, they, they go bad. Okay, uh, so you have to, to get that root beer. Um, scavenge them. Yeah, it's just it. like we do for 7800 games. <laughs> That's right. Uh, there are some places like BNC and Best Electronics that sell pokies, okay. but they may not have, like, some of the arcade games, like a quad pokey or, or things like that. Oh, uh, wow. And he does for sell quad music pokey as well. Stuff. Yeah. There you go, that, now yeah, you can see the animal with more back to that. Yeah. Uh, but the, that version of pokey doesn't have, it's not a full <laughs> pokey because the Atari Epic computers use it for, I think, input and some, uh, like, keyboard and stuff like that. Oh, So it provides additional functionality. So, but he is working on a new version of that, or a nice job continuing to finish it, I guess. Yeah. So that the Atari 8 and 6200 users will be able to use it. Okay. 
Okay, so about the full functionality yeah, yeah. rather than just the music side of things. But that, all, we all, uh, all we need is music for the 7800. Right. So, and I made 20 copies of Friendly Bear's Crystal Quest Which and Super Circus Atari Age yep. that used the Pokemon. One. I'll put them in the store. Yep. And I priced them here at $70. And then that, which is not bad considering that Pokemon One is $40 if you can buy it. That's or right. Or you can buy it by itself. And that's with the box as well. Yeah, that's but, the complete game. Yeah. yeah. And they use a more complex board. Yeah. Uh, although nice, I don't have to lease these solder ball blade or uh, poke chips and ball blazers. Yeah, and time. destroy them too. And, yeah, <laughs> we don't talk about that. Right? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I don't know. I, don't, I mean, it's I really haven't sad. sacrificed that many ball blazers. Yeah. Uh, because it, you know, people have to, and they're expensive too. They want a price. You know, I used to be able to buy them ten dollars, twenty dollars, and now they're even more than that. So do you find that people? Uh, Send in their their pokey chips from from the ball blazers, or do you? No, use? no, that's very rare. Okay. Uh, when people send me pokey chips, sometimes I don't know where they source them from necessarily. <laughs> okay. I suspect that a lot of them come from broken Atari 800 computers. Oh, Atari computers. okay. And I'm okay with that if, if the computer's not salvageable. Yeah. And a lot yeah. of times those chips are socketed, so okay. it's just a matter of popping them off. Oh, that's and at easy. least they're they're going to get some use at that point. Yeah. But I would they get never to live again. Yeah, I would never tell somebody <laughs> kill an 800. Yeah, kill an 800 because there'd be a great cry in the world. For I might them. say, yeah, yeah, I might say, kill a 5200. No, I'm just kidding. Don't but, it, <laughs> but uh, no, I would never. Or I wouldn't ask them to, to sacrifice a commando card because that's the only other 7800 game that you can poke. Uh, so there's only those two. Those two. Okay. Atari Vintage. No, yeah, if they want better audio, then they can just put a poke in it. And of course, that only happens in two games. Yeah. They really, of course, I'm. Speaking to the choir, should have put a pokey in the 700 because they really went backwards with that person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. But yeah, so that's an exciting project. Uh, but so many other great games. Uh, oh yeah. And uh, yesterday there were just a ton of people out here. Today Madness. it is slower, but it's still a good steady flow of people. Oh yeah, it's like yeah. almost all the consoles are filled with people playing it right now. If you were here yesterday, I would not be here talking to you. Uh, yeah, so, busy. so it's yeah. actually good that I came yeah. here today when it's a little bit slower. The madness has died down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. good. Yes, yeah, definitely. And you know, having John here and his brother and so many other and, and oh. Robert DiCrescenzo, who's done you know all the yeah, 700 games. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, having him here and uh, who else? Have you got? Uh, Todd, yeah, Bob Todd Ferminski is here. who did Dark Dragon Descent. Yes. Uh, yeah, is, yeah, I ran into here. him here. And yep. uh, who else? So those, we have special guest, Bob. Uh, Fred wants to meet. Come Back on over, plus. say hi to the crowd. <laughs> We're streaming live on the internet on Twitch. How are you doing? Introduce yourself. I'm Bob DiCosenzo. I make 7,800 Atari games. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, your new game has just come out Baby on cartridge, Baby Pac-Man. Yeah. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about uh, the, the development of it and you know, the developed. obstacles and challenges <laughs> maybe you condense it down gloss yeah. over some of the some of the stuff oh sorry yeah um it took about a year to develop yeah and the major obstacle i ran into was the pinball um, yeah i could not get to, in fact i gave up on the game twice oh wow um, yeah um this really smart person <laughs> called <laughs> kurt Walsh. he's also on the Atari forums he uh took over and, took, and did all the pinball physics, you know, yep. bouncing in all the angles and stuff like that. Thank yeah. God, because um, it would have stayed there. That's how and it did stayed. he do those from scratch or did he... Um, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 So, um, has, is there any other pinball games for the 7800 or... If you count, well, Jinx kind of okay. is breakout pinball kind of thing. Yeah, but, um, but you wanted something like really... I mean, it, this is... In the arcade, this is an yes. actual pinball game with with a ball. Yes. So you really wanted realistic uh, uh, physics as much as you could for that. Yeah. So it's really important to get that right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I wanted to, uh, being that nobody, there was never a home port of this game before. Oh. So. No. I don't think anybody would even think of making a physical, tangible uh, pinball game into something like this. Originally, I, I was going to use the keyboard controllers, take them apart. Oh, yeah, yeah. And try to build a, a 3D print, a, a, a pinball field, a small one, just to use for it. Oh, that wow. That way too, <laughs> way too That's involved. out of control. Yeah. I mean, super fun, but yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, but it ended up being you know, everything on the screen, which it was, it was fun, except for me, except for the pinball part, which they yeah. got, again, for Kurt. Um, and and, uh, and how's, been, how's the reception been uh, to the game? Um, Here and, and online, I know. Good. It's, yep. it's been good. People have been playing it. I mean, all along in the in the thread of Atari Age, people yep. are trying it. And, um, 
it's it's been good as far as I know. Yeah. Oh, that's excellent. I know I picked up a copy yesterday, so I'm very very eager to play it when I get back home after I sleep a little bit. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. I got to play here too because there's a baby pack machine here. Oh, so, is there one? Yeah, oh, I, yeah. I, and it works. <laughs> it actually oh, works. Oh, wow. Because, yeah, I, I was just in Portland like uh, three weeks ago, and I played. we played it at uh, Ground Control. Is it the one from Ground Control? I what? don't. Yeah, because it said Ground Control. Oh, oh, oh does it? Okay. Last night, oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. The, the right flipper was yeah, shot. Yeah. yeah. Time yeah. broke. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was broken when I got there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so it probably is from Ground Control because that's where we played it uh, oh, about a month okay. ago. So, well, that's excellent. So that people can compare and contrast and, and see yeah. how good the physics are. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> they're like they're all <laughs> playing it right. off. It's bouncing left and it should be bouncing right. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> well, that's great. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thank you very yeah. much. Nice yeah. meeting you. Yeah, yeah, very good meeting you as well. Yeah. And and your game and actually speaking of that your game will be. Uh, entered into the 2019 Homebrew Awards because we've expanded to Atari 7800 games and 5200 and 8-bit. So it'll be completely eligible for that. So good luck. Thank that. you very much. Yeah, yeah. So that'll be really exciting to see how that turns out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much. Um, so what else do we want to see? Yep. Dion's over there. Okay. Yeah. Um, because his game is like right there, one of them. Yeah, we'll move back there a little bit. Hello. Good. How are you? Very good. Oh, that's great. I know that name. I've seen that name around. Oh, that's excellent. Very, very good. So we're actually live streaming right now. It's very awesome. Yeah. I, I couldn't wait to do this here. Is it your first time here? Oh no, 2013. Oh, bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, very good to meet you as well. So we've got Dionoid over there. Dion, I'm going to go grab him because this is Amoeba Jump, finally on cartridge. Um, we're going to do a proper uh, interview as well. So I'm going to, I don't know if I want to get into too much. Maybe we'll just talk very lightly with him and then go in depth in the uh, interview. So I'm going to grab him right now and you can stare at Amoeba Jump. <laughs> Ah, it's live, it's fine. You can forgive me. So come on over here. Yes, we got a pretty because the microphone's here. Maybe I should hold the microphone. I think that'll be way better. Yeah. I'll keep it away from my mouth, but this will be way better. Okay. People are watching already, right? Yeah, we've got uh, Ice Posta. We've got uh, Thomas Yench. Ah. Um, and whoever else, we've got a lot of people. So this, this can go way back now. So make sure you get both of us in there. So. Yeah, and Thomas lives in Germany, which is nearby Netherlands. Like. And that's where you, you flew in from? Yeah, right. So it was a 10 hour flight, I 10 heard? hour flight. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. yeah, I just flew in from Minneapolis. Yeah. So you beat me by uh, a lot. <laughs> like, and I, I was complaining and telling Al, and Al yeah. drove by car like two so, days. So, so we, <laughs> you, he beat you like yeah. way past I that. I bowed to him. Yeah. With a bunch of equipment too. Right. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. So you finally get to see your game on cartridge and your and your Tower of Rubble I'm, as I'm well. So happy on like to a see beta this. beta cartridge, I guess. It is with yeah. a beta label. Yeah. That's very it exciting. Is. And uh, we're going to do a full interview, proper proper interview with you. Let's do that. That, that yeah. I'm going to edit and do all that. So this is going to be light, this this interview. I'm not going to cool. go too in-depth. Yeah. So, yeah, it's really exciting. I I mean, we've been following Amoeba Jump 
I mean, it's been in the works for about a year and a half, I guess. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's, it's basically was complete like almost a year ago, I think. Somewhere yeah. In November. Uh, yeah, and it went from um, doodle jump right. to, to poodle jump, which I loved. I yeah. loved the flap ears on poodle, but. <laughs> You got a lot of negative reaction from I'm, for poodles for some reason. Yeah, there's some poodle haters out there. I, I like cats more, but I love the poodle. The, the flappy ears were so cute. Yeah, but well, I, I, I know, but I, I think it's better. I thought it was better to move to something like like an amoeba, or which is something that everyone can relate to instead of dogs. <laughs> That's well, right. Yeah, some people like cats. Some, some yeah, people like dogs. I like cats. You could some have people maybe like made yeah. a selector to be a cat or a dog, and then you could have covered yeah. most people. Yeah. But Amoeba is neutral, right? Right. Yeah. And and it gets away from, I guess, the original Doodle Jump. But um, were you? In, I know with Tower of Rubble, you were in, in talks with the the original creator, and they know about Tower yeah, of Rubble. Right. Was there any connect? Um, uh, you connection with the Doodle Jump people right. it, at it, all? Or? It, it was inspired on Doodle Jump. That was the yeah. first name. Um, and I, I kind of found out that Doodle Jump is not the original title. Oh. It's like uh, Peppy Jump. Oh, yes, that's right. So they, right. they copied it from, I think it's like a Chinese guy probably made that. Right. Uh, but I mean, this is a, a platformer, a vertical scrolling platformer. And there's yeah. many, many iterations of that. There are, many, um, there are many like this, right? But somehow you, you managed to capture something really magical, in it with with the feel, yeah, and the bouncing and, and I, the, the zooming the, up the, and the, just the feedback feels I get so from right. people also here is that they say they like jumping on a spring because it, it gives them like <laughs> I want to do that again, like a big boost. Yeah, yeah, it's and it's just really fun. It's what I, I think I say it over and over on the stream. It's like yeah. th that game that you want to play one more time. Right. It's like, yeah. I know I can do better. I, yeah, I, I was the one who messed up. It's not the game. Right. Uh, the and, the and game th is th flawless. It took some it's time to make sure that there's always a way out. So yeah, that's there's right. like an algorithm that's making sure that that's, sometimes there are gaps between the platforms. Yeah. But there, there can only be like a maximum gap. Let's move a little yeah. closer. And when that happens, yeah. um, there's just another platform. So. so there's always a way out. You never, ever, ever yeah. stop. Which, right. Which is good. So that. You can only blame yourself. <laughs> it's if always you fall. your fault, right? And what's what's the highest score that somebody's got? I, I, can, I I've lost track. Now. I know people rolled it already. Oh okay. Oh wow. Because I know so, there was like um, a competition that was placed into a competition, and people were just yeah. destroying the scores. Like, yeah, boom, and boom, there's boom. there's one guy that that actually rolled it, made. Nine 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 nine, and then the, the score is stuck there. You can oh. still play. Okay. And he found out about Easter egg also. <laughs> oh, I've never found that. Yeah. So, wow. Yeah. Okay. So it's still. Did he reveal the Easter egg? He did. Okay. He so, did. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna refrain from looking that up. And it was cool. in the Easter egg was in. Um, it, it, it he took a, a, a screenshot of his okay. score, and yeah. the Easter egg was in there. So. Okay. Yeah. I'm not sure if you noticed. No. And it, this is really great to see the package. It's like, oh, it's, oh man. It's beautiful. I came in yesterday. It's like, oh, here it is. Like, yeah. Extra on cartridge. And the orange and the blue, the, yeah. the beautiful colors together. And it's yeah. a very simple, clean uh, cover. Na Nathan did a great job on that one. Nathan's oh, yeah. He's a master of, yeah. of graphics. It's unbelievable. And he, he had it the first time right almost. So his first sketch was this, without the colors. Yeah. And I think. I think I said, well, maybe we can do something with rings in in, in the uh, background. Yeah, and uh, he, he liked that because Nathan is like he liked Looney Tunes and, and stuff like that. And it also almost gives you a sense of like if you miss that platform, you're falling down that hole. Right, you're done. Exactly. Yeah, 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 that, yeah. that's the idea. Um, and so, so you also have Tower of Rubble here as well. Maybe we can. Oh, somebody's playing it right now. Yeah. Um, and and it's a totally different game like completely different um, and, that's and, and both of the games you're really involved like from the start which is which is actually cool yeah. oh yeah I mean I think I saw Tower of Rebels somewhere else and I posted yeah um, that this oh this looks like it could be made into a 2600 game I don't know if that was at the same time you're developing it because you saw it at the same time and then there was another person who yeah. was doing another strain of it and 
Uh, unfortunately, I, I remember you posted something about the 64, the Commodore yeah. 64 port of that game. Yeah, and I was like, well, this um, is this can be not easily, but it, it no, can it was, be done. For me, that was the first time I saw the port, and then I yeah. looked up the original and said, well, that's even better, right? I can yes. port that to the to the Atari. And then there was somebody else who started on another port of it, and as right. soon as he, unfortunately, as soon as he saw yours, he was like, nah, I'm stepping away. I'm done. Yeah. This guy yeah. is. But so you know, I didn't know about his port. I think I was early, and he yeah he released his his port like I think a you month both, later. You something. both started at the same time, so both of you weren't aware of each other. Yeah, and it yeah. happens like that once in a while with with ports. It just something clicks with with the game. Yeah, and and it just this everybody hears about it and they all want to make a port and exactly. they all start and, and that, that's what happens. Yeah, um, and it's and it's too bad we don't get to see what his vision. Would have right. been like because it's you know you can have two versions you can have three versions of it and they're yeah, all going to turn out a little different yeah 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 but uh, yeah it, it, it makes sense to me that if, if you yeah. see two people creating the same game I was like yeah if you go on I yeah. probably look for something else to develop right okay um, so one one or the uh, other would have fallen off yeah because it, it just takes a lot of your your time to create a game and if you see someone that that's a game you want to create also. It's, yeah, it's difficult um, and, and you have to almost keep yourself away from it if you're going to develop it. Yeah, yeah. And you stuck really close to the original in terms of animation. Yeah. And and it paid off because right. the smooth movement of I, the character in that is, is unbelievable. It's it's a one-on-one -on -one copy of the original. Yeah, uh, and it translates so yeah. well. And, and I contacted the, the original creator of the game. Oh, you would have to when you're doing yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. And he was all for it. All for it. Yeah. Oh, that's that's wonderful. Yeah. That because, you know, if no, if he's not going to make a port for the 2600, why not let someone else okay. do yeah. it? Yeah. Um, it's agree. not going to take away from him. It's only going to add. And it was a free game already, oh, so okay. it's more like that made it a lot easier yeah. to yeah. to you know for him to say yeah that's fine. It's not yeah. going to take away from sales or anything. Exactly. Yeah. Was his donation where? Uh, or it was yeah, just, it was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's on itch, so you can decide how many to spend, but you can even say, I want it for free, and you get it. Right, so no, no limit on that. Yeah. yeah. So let's, uh, they've moved, so let's go around and just take a let's quick look at uh, yeah. the cartridge, and we won't take it out. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to move over. Hello, Dan. Hey, buddy, how are you? Good, how are you? I know you're working. I just wanted to say hi. And well, it's, it's a free-for-all. It's a stream. Cool. Yeah. We're just going to get you on camera for a second. Uh, Stan Kitchen, everyone! Hey! Woo. Hi, everyone! <laughs> Welcome to Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Yes. So, we're just doing a live stream here and just Excellent. going around the Atari Age booth and talking with uh, developers and stuff. So Great. Wonderful. Yeah. Good. So we'll we'll enjoy up. the show. Yeah, we'll catch up in a bit. Absolutely. Bye bye. <laughs> Are we done? Uh, right with yeah. the cables? Or yeah, we could pull that along. So you can see oh, the fun, yeah, yeah, yeah. fun we're having here with, with cabling and making all this work. There's Tanya. Point, point at the, uh, the booth too. Oh yeah, we'll get the Atari H booth in the background here. Um, yeah, we'll do that. And we'll stand on this side of it. And I'll get you closer to the game, but not covering it. Okay. Actually, Something here? yeah, on this side. Okay. Yeah. Um, does that look okay? Uh, or am I off the screen? I need to be on this side. Can I get on that side? Yep. Can you just move the screen? More? Okay, all the way, please. There we go. Yeah, I got an autograph. Yeah, we'll get on either side of it. That'll be easier. One more side, Mike. Good. Okay. So, oh. so Tower of Rubble. Tower of Rubble. Very <laughs> exciting. Yeah. And looking at the colors, it looks like you're kind of staying true to the to the look of the PC version. Right. Right. For people that don't know Tower of Rubble, it's it's a PC game that um, I think was released two years ago. Uh, a port was made for the Commodore 64. Yeah. You mentioned something on Facebook saying, well, this, this port looks like something you could do on an Atari. Yeah. And by then I finished my game uh, Amoeba Jump already. And I was looking for something new, like 
I had like a new game, something yeah. with music. Ah. Like it, it, it wasn't even like the, 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 the thing that it could be ported very well. It was about the music that, that really struck me. Like the synchronized right. boom, boom. It, it's, yeah. it's such a unique game in that right. way where the, the music dictates the movement or the movement dictates the music. It's exactly. all synchronized so that it, the music really helps you play. It's part of the game. Without the music, yeah. it's a very different game. Exactly. When you know the, 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 the sync of the music, you know when the blocks start to fall. You know when you have to move, get out of the way. Yeah. That's yeah. exactly the game I wanted to, to port. Like, yeah, and you developed it rather quickly, it seems. Like, uh, yeah. yeah, it came together really fast. And you just recently added uh, two players to it, yeah. which is changes the dynamic quite a lot. It does. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I'm after the, the the Portland Retro. I'm, I'm actually releasing this game, the two-player mode, also. Oh, excellent! So yeah. this is like the the sneak preview for people who are here, yeah. and then and then once everybody's played it here, out it goes into the public. I really like to know. I saw it on your show, of course. Yeah. People playing two uh, two players against each other. Yeah. It, it changes a lot. So yeah. I played it with my daughters a bit, just to check it out how it works, and, and yeah. um, the tactics, is, it's really different, so oh, yeah. uh, when I played with someone else, we end up standing close to each other, yeah. waiting to block <laughs> the other when, when a beams hit them. Or um, Yeah, that's, that's what we know. ended up doing on the show as well, you're right. kind of like, oh, 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 and then they have to retreat. Yeah. Um, are, were you, are you thinking of making a, an option for pass-through, because um, that's kind because there's it's a totally different dynamic right, and, it is. and yeah. actually we were thinking it, it, during the stream it's like you can like rescue each other and make it a uh, co-op because it because yeah. it's not really competitive you can pass through each other because you're like ghosts to each other right. at that point right so it's, it's um, not really I, I actually same. tried it and um, the graphics looked a bit weird when you uh, you pass each other it's like you both become purple oh. like it's the mix between blue and red that's right. Yeah, it it's doesn't more quite like work. you're both playing your own game uh, yeah. uh, un until someone dies, and uh, ma yeah. maybe I add it in. I have another. Goal. Yeah, because I think we concluded that it doesn't. It's almost like playing single player right. at the same time as somebody else playing single player. Yeah. So it doesn't. It doesn't make it different. It doesn't right. add to it. But playing where you can block each other, that's like there's tactics, and yeah. so that's. And I, I think on your stream you played it with Darcy, I guess. Yes, yeah. that's right. I, I, I think we only saw the beginning of what, what could be done there. Yeah. Um, like your your tactics was your, you stay close to each other, but not that close. Um, <laughs> yeah, because it's scary, you know. It's, it's kind of scary. You need a little bit of room, because yeah. you, you run out. Like it, exactly. The middle starts disappearing, but you, so you have to get out of there yeah, and each yeah. person would have their boat their own side at that point yes oh. a little bit lower okay thank you <laughs> we've got a producer here helping us out yeah we want to make sure we want to make sure it's good yeah I put it very sensitive because it's usually far away yeah so yeah it's it's amazing how quick it uh, came yeah. together and, yeah. and you Get to see it on cartridge here, which is awesome. It's amazing, yeah. Um, I tried to make it, make a picture of it, but, <laughs> but uh, I, I took it out and it's kind of sensitive. So yeah, I'm, so I'm, it might be this machine that's like, oh, don't touch it be. too much. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and the cool thing, people play this game, so I get to watch. That's what I was just going to yeah, ask. Yeah, I do that all the time, and, and then you they, see how it works and how they're playing it. And yeah. And then when they make remarks like, I like the music, I say, oh, I created the game. And they're all excited, like, OK, cool. Right, and right. I tell them some tricks. So I have to explain everyone like the, the secret jump, like oh, yeah. the, the special one, where you jump, yeah. the large jump from block to Cause, block. Because that, that's not intuitive completely. It isn't. You have, yeah. And it's great that you have this screen here to practice uh, so that you have no threat of, of dying right. here. And what a lot of people do is press the button when they see the screen. It's right. like that makes sense, and it looks like only one joystick is plugged into here. So yeah, yeah. unfortunately, <laughs> nobody's been playing two-player, but no, that's no. okay. And and um, Amoeba Jump as well. Have you been watching people play that too? Yeah, yeah, I did. And how's the reaction been to that? They, they all they they like the. It's more in the details. They like they like hitting the screens, and they like yeah. when the little Amoeba opens his mouth, like oh. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's fun. And it's it's those little details that's yeah I like in my game. That's too. the polish, the yeah. polish of the game that yeah. makes Zero it. Page. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> so 
It's Michael from uh, Good Deal Games. We'll uh, go over there a little bit later and talk to him. Yeah. Because um, he has a new golf game out. And another one, too. I can't remember. Yeah. So. And to all the pe people watching, I really appreciate everyone watching the show, you doing the show. Oh, it's thank you. Amazing. It's part of the reasons I create the game. To see wow. people play it, to get feedback. Yeah. If the show wasn't there, it's more. It, I would miss a lot, really. And and people have said that it's like screaming into a void. Yeah. Uh, when you make a game and there's not a lot of reaction, say on the forums, or pe maybe people are playing the game, yeah. but they're not giving feedback. And 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 that's that's one of the many reasons I I, I do the show, is because I love playing games. But I wanna yeah. I wanna show off all this amazing work people are doing. And I just didn't see it out there too much. Yeah. There wasn't a, a, a show about 2600 Homebrew, but yet it's a, a huge scene. Like, look, this is yeah. this is one of the bigger booths here. It takes up like a city block, let's say. Yeah. It's it's huge. Um, and it's been this crowdy like. Oh, yeah, it, yesterday it was even far of madness. Yeah, it was madness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's better that we're doing the interviews today for sure. Yeah. 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 Um, so. That's that's wonderful, and and we're gonna do a, a more in depth because I, I have some questions. Okay, cool. Um, and we'll do that later off stream, and I'll be putting it all together and, and putting screenshot. Video died. Oh. This died. Okay, we're still um, broadcasting audio. Oh, it's probably the um, probably the battery. So hang tight, people. Oh, I have to get my bag from Al. So, you held down the <laughs> fort and uh, <Yeah. laughs> took over the show. Excellent. So, it's very exciting to have one of your games finally released and nice. another one you said is really, really close to being it, released. It, it is close. Yeah, yeah. excellent. Um, uh, what I did is I, I, I created this game as 4K, 4K uh, game. Wow. I switched to 8K okay, now. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, with, with the addition of the two players, right. yeah. I couldn't fit it in anymore, so <laughs> I, I, now I'm bank switching to 8K, yeah. which means I can put in some more graphics, some more uh, um, Sound. sounds, which yeah. I'm gonna do. Yeah, uh, and, and it was quite an accomplishment for 4K. Yeah, it without, was without the two player. It's, yeah. it's amazing with all the music and the and the beautiful title screen. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. But then I thought, okay, I want to make this like a really good game. Let's let's switch to 8K. Yeah, if you're gonna do it, just go all out, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's 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 awesome. Yeah, if you remember the original, if you got hit by something, you get like a message in the screen saying, "Hit by a laser beam," uh, or you get vaporized, something like that. And in the original here, it just you just you're, die. You just die. Yeah. So you'll be adding that into it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. nice. Okay. That's and, and the high scores and stuff like that. Ah, so, so you'll be using the save key. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Yep. Great. Okay. I think, I think we covered that. So, um, yep. so we're going. I'm going to do an interview with you. Are you going to be around here? We can do that next. I just want to go around some of the other games here. Yeah, yeah. And and then I'm here. So then uh, we can do the interview right after that, if, yeah, if that's okay. That. Yeah. yeah, since we're pretty much set up and going. Cool. Um, so we're going to take a look at some of the other games that are here at uh, the Atari Age booth. Um, oh, there's two games here. Um, so you'll have to move along the camera if it's possible. <laughs> I know, it's a lot of work. Um, so we got Robot Z here. Um, I don't know if much has changed. I'm not sure uh, how much he's progressed because I haven't seen an updated version of that in a long time. Um, this one is very new. It's a very fun two-player game. We yeah. need a lot more two-player uh, like games. Yeah. yeah, it's a great um, kind of launching game shooting at each other kind of you know um, and we played it on the show um, it's by blue swimmer um, so he's done a great job of this and so I guess this is just a beta I'm uh, he's still working on it oh penalt so exciting I'm not sure how much he's added to this um, whether there's been any uh, updates since we played it last on the show. We played it pretty recently. Looks like we're in a town right now. 
Let's exit the town. And of course, I need to fix my uh, Atari 2600 <laughs> to uh, get this this working. And um, oh, yeah, I don't think anything has been updated here. But you know, on the show, we get a lot of really brand new versions. So we we got a lot of these a lot of these games before they were debuting at PRGE. Um, so we're very uh, very thankful to be able to play these types of games on the show before it debuts here. Uh, okay, let's move along. I'll be your wire person too. And of course, Chaotic Grill, which is a Burger Time port. Lots of fun. Um, it's it's having its, uh, uh, I guess, playable debut here. What do we have here? Oh, Ninja Sky and Low Res World as well. Look at these fun things. <laughs> that are on cartridge. <laughs> I only get them on ROM, right? Only here, only here you can see this. You can hold it. Physical media. I love physical media. So I guess people can switch out the games. Um, here's Chaotic Grill. Play it with one hand. And I think we played uh, we played a bit of Burger Time at uh, Ground Control when we were here last. Did you play it here yeah. as well? Oh, we played this. Oh, yeah, a lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Erlen just destroyed it. He did so well. And, and people were saying that Erlen was doing so well because he wasn't playing right. <laughs> he was just running away from the bad guys instead of concentrating on the burgers. Um, but somehow that worked perfectly. <laughs> so sometimes, you know, it works. All kinds of strategies. And that's, that's really the fun of a lot of these games is that you can play them more than one way. Oh, next one. A lot of fun, Aardvark. And this one is actually released on cartridge with a box. Beautiful box there. I believe this is Nathan Strum, I'm sure again. It looks like his, never takes credit. He needs to sign his name on these boxes somewhere, you know? Go with the uh, go with the Activision mantra of making sure you take credit, but I guess they want to keep it clean. Oh no, it's right there, Nathan Strum. I missed it. So he's he's got uh, he's got his name on the back. Oh, we got some bagpipes. Are they on a unicycle? Yeah. Yep, it's the unicycle bagpiper. <laughs> oh, you even get the Doppler effect. Yeah. Or maybe that's just bagpipes. <laughs> and we've got Wizard of War Arcade over here. Actually, we'll start, start Aardvark. Looks gorgeous, beautiful colors. Great animation. And we got this, uh, we got this version. Uh, before we went to PRG uh, about a week or so ago, we got to play it on the show. Um, I picked up pretty much every single game that got released here. Uh, Tanya came here yesterday and I bought just about everything that was new. It's good to have a complete collection of all the Atari age games. Okay. And... Oh, yeah. And here we have uh, Wizard of War, and uh, finally in box, beautiful cover again. And it's a it's a hard game. We have trouble with this game, don't we? Yeah, it's, it's hard, but it's a lot of fun. It's really challenging. I think once you get once we get up to around level twelve or thirteen, that's when we're done. It just gets so fast. And I think at that stage, um, the enemies the enemies don't even fire at you anymore. I believe they just they just run into you and you die. Um, so we're gonna go over to the next one, which is Roach in Space. Bring the camera. There we go. And we've got Roach in Space by. 
Oh, okay. I just don't want to get people's feet. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, let's try and get it underneath. Sorry about this. Get it out of your way. I can't suck anymore at this game. Either way, so, you know, it's challenging. Yeah. What about that stuff that's like shooting at my this asshole? Yeah. <laughs> so I've got Roach in space in the box. We've played this a lot on the show. And this is by VHZC, who is always amazing. Does the uh, ninja guy in uh, Low Res World as well. Um, known for his massive variety of enemies and levels. Uh, and especially in this game as well. Uh, I, don't think I, we've, I don't think we've made it far enough in the game to see a repeat of any character yet. But now that it's been released on cartridge, we can play it again and see how far we can get. And we'll move along to Avalanche here by John Champeau. And this is just um, on beta right now. This is not a released game yet. Um, John Champeau has enough stuff coming out this year. He doesn't need three games. He's got Wizard of War and Galagon. Um, and then we've got Venture Reloaded. And this is um, this is a really amazing. It's not. It's not a home. It's a hack actually, um, because the um, in development by Jeff Johnson, and he actually sent this game to me um, before we left. And uh, so we're going to be playing this game when we get back on Wednesday's stream. Thanks, Al. <laughs> We're going to be playing this game, Venture Reloaded, on Wednesday's stream because he sent it to me just like I was leaving. It was the same day I was leaving, so I was communicating with him. And, and um, he sent me a lot of information about the game. And it's taking the Venture game that was released on the 2600 and making it a lot closer to the arcade and a lot closer to, you know, the ColecoVision version. So let's see if we can take a look really quick at it. It's got the title screen as uh, the Atari 2600 game. <laughs> Tanya's dying over there. We've got a lot of equipment she has to carry. We're almost done. Almost done. <laughs> and uh, I don't think I'll be able to complete a level with one hand, but we'll try. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, I got the treasure. I just need to go out. And. I made it out, and you can see it it fills it in. And on the original Atari 2600 version, it doesn't do that, so this is a lot closer to the uh, uh, arcade and ColecoVision version. And what do we have here? We have Dragon's Descent. And we have the developer as well. This is Todd Fermansky, and I only know you by your name <laughs> online. <laughs> the real name has been revealed. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, where did you come in from? Where, uh, where uh, Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Okay, that's yeah. excellent. So not too bad of a distance. Yeah, it's I been mean, road trip. Yeah, and yeah. we're from uh, Vancouver, Canada. Okay. So we're coming down south. We're coming up north. Kind of meeting in the middle. Yep. And um, finally, it's on cartridge. Definitely. With a beautiful box. It's gorgeous. With the oh, little maze in the background that uh, echoes the maze on the screen. And uh, we played this game quite a bit on the show. And uh, we finally beat the first level on the show, which is great. We haven't beat the second one. Um, so it's quite challenging. I, so, I wanted to make a game that you know you weren't able to, weren't able to kind of finish in 10 minutes and then kind of forget about. You yeah. want to stick with it. And it's kind of a, a dungeony but also action game. So it kind of uh, goes to that, that, ba that balance. It has a very nice balance. It's, it's not like, oh, you have to collect five keys and do this and this. It's like you have to do very uh, straight ahead tasks but you have a lot of action in it and that increases quite a bit well there's a couple ways to play I mean, there's the the power-ups you can either go like collect hearts to be like a tank you know have a lot of hit That's points right. or upgrade your fire breath so you're you know like a glass cannon or some mix between and yep. i've seen people play different ways and actually succeed in different ways which is uh, I'm glad. okay yeah because we were playing it one way and and you gave us a suggestion to kind of balance it out a bit more or go mm -hmm. back and forth and that helped quite a lot so it, there's a lot of variety in the ways you can play it, I guess, depending on your skill uh, and what you're better at. 
Um, so where did you come up with the idea for this game? This is a completely original idea, right? Yeah, no, it's, um, one of it was, I like, I mean, I've done a lot of research in procedural content generation, and one thing is like, uh, let's see if I can do a roguelike on the 2600. Yeah, um, and that is a challenge, right? That was, yeah, I mean, there was a lot of things, I mean, you can't really do that well, but then, I managed to get the, with, the, with the constraints that it's actually, it's a fun system to develop for. Um, and I kind of, you know, made it action-oriented because the Atari is kind of generally better at that. But the, yeah. uh, but then I made a pretty good maze generation. There's, I mean, thousands and thousands of mazes you can stumble on. You can, you can there's a random mode so you can actually play so it's not the same maze twice. Right. Um, so if you get to that, that skill level, it's like, okay, you're going to have to find your own way through the maze. Exactly. And it's, uh, is it a four by four? It's I a can't roughly eight by eight, eight by eight, but it's not it's not everything. So there's only there's any given maze has about twenty rooms or so. Okay, so not everything doesn't connect. It's not a no a full it's one. Not a grid. So there there are dead ends. There are loops, and yeah, you're not sure. But every maze has a treasure room, has right. a key room, has you know, right, has an exit. So. And how did you uh, how did you make it like so that everything connects up and you also have the treasure room and the key room and the exit and so that you don't run into a dead end or are not able to get to the key room. We posted, I was actually at the uh, Rolex celebration and gave a talk on that. I'll have to send the link. Um, yeah. But then what I kind of do is, is I carve out, I basically place the rooms first and then I don't connect every room to every room but I always connect like and it, um, I connect like the key room to the exit and such um, okay. to the place where there's always a guaranteed through path. Okay, so you make the paths first, and then do you add on the extra rooms? Uh, kind of in doing that, I, I add a dummy room that it, that's kind of a special room, even though it isn't, it's empty, and that's how you can sometimes get a dead end or sometimes get a loop that that can kind of seem like a, a, a distraction. So you, you get yeah. enough variety, even though it's small enough, and it you know, fits on... 16 to 32 kilobytes. So okay. <laughs> and how big is the how big is the ROM? The ROM is 16 kilobytes, and I okay. think it's on a 32 kilobyte board. So. Okay. And and you've been here. You've been watching people play your game. Game. It's 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 tough to get in. Like you know, you people who kind of get through the first little bit. Like it's like training wheels. They get you kind of warm up. It feels intimidating at first, but if you if you have patience and a little bit of tactics, people go through and get pretty far. Okay, so they're able to complete the first level, not too bad, yeah, and, right. and then they get kind of the idea, oh, I have to get this, I have to get this. And and it has a, a good write-up so that you can right. you know, understand the game a little bit when, when before you play it. Right. Oh, that's excellent. So yeah. there's a way you can play, like there is a final boss, but you can either have it random or have it be infinite, so it will so you can basically play as as uh, far as you can. Um, right. And on the randomness, what's does the skill level increase as you go, or is it random skill level? Or it's random, monster? but I do have the rooms do get as you get deeper, get more complicated, get more treacherous. Uh, okay. I introduce enemies as you get deeper. Um, around level seven or eight, I, I kind of have introduced all the all the types of enemies. You've encountered all, most of the bosses, so yeah. it's either you can target the end of the game to throw more of the tutorial because you still. I still end up ramping, there's a soft time limit. If you spend too long in a maze trying to yes. mark, farm points, it starts getting black and you have to... And it's yep. deadly. It, it, you're, you're done. Like, I, I fear yeah. that when that when it <laughs> starts getting dark, it's like that black dragon comes, right? Right, if you and, wait even longer, the black dragon will come. And you can still survive if you're really careful. And sure. <laughs> you, but, but yeah, you gotta hurry up. Because he can go through walls and he just goes straight for you like... You yeah. Know, like those enemies in the arcade, it's like you're taking too long. Yeah, this thing is coming to come and kill you. Kill you, but yeah, like again, even if if you're if you're good, you can still kind of outrun. You can manipulate them, but yeah, by that point, you're still kind of like I can't mine four points. I can't yeah. be can't be cheap in mine. You know, sit around a corner and just pick yeah. off easy enemies. And then that, that was the purpose of that guy. It's like no, you just can't go back in another room in another room. Yeah, I wanted to give it. There's carrots and sticks, I want to you know, have the player always moving, always going deeper into the maze, have reasons to be deeper. If you, as you go deeper, enemies give you more points. Uh, the yeah. only way to, like, best way to heal is to find a new treasure room, and there's only one treasure room per level, so mm. you're like, crap, I need to find the next treasure room, because <laughs> I need to get either refuel by fire breath or, you know, re-heal up. And, That's right. And yeah. so you're always kind of being pushed forward, you know, implicitly, and then it gets explicit if you wait too long. So how did you uh, refine the uh, game balance? Uh, did you have a lot of beta testers, or you were testing it yourself? So, I, I did put it out for beta testing and got yeah. some feedback and yeah. such. Um, and it's been it's been interesting. And, and I kind of got lucky some of the random seeds that I have a default, like make a pretty good first level. Like you get the treasure room initially pretty quickly. Yeah. You're kind of eases you in. It's not that hard of a maze. Beta yes. mazes get harder, you know. Um, yeah. Because I can see 
the, the balance of this game, like teetering, teetering on an edge where it's like too hard or too easy, and mm. and I find it uh, acceptably challenging. Let's <laughs> say <laughs> it's a hard, it's a fine line to walk. It, um, it is. I am working on a 7800 version. Yes, that's right. With the um, and that one actually have a little more space, so I have I have kind of a difficulty mode setting, okay. which which will help. So like the walls aren't quite as lethal, and you can kind of change up some things. Um, yeah. Added in things like music and such, but in many ways it's the same layout. If you know the mazes in this one, you'll know the mazes in the 7800. There's right. familiarity and such. So and, that's and that, I think that was a struggle when I first started playing this was the walls, mm -hmm. and, it, and most games you don't die when touching the walls, but some you do. And yeah. um, like anyway, preserved and such. The yeah, exactly. And so that was, but once you get used to that, once you get used to the the movement and the uh, the momentum of the dragon, it uh, it becomes very natural. And I think I have the momentum, so yeah, you can go around corners. It what it's it's tricky at first, but you can do maneuvers like you can dart forward, turn on behind you, fire, and keep going the same direction. Ah, that's right. So it's actually advantageous. You yeah. can use it if you, you can do acrobatics. A lot of the bosses you almost need to. Like, you can like run circles oh, around them. That's right. And, and then fire while you're still moving in the opposite direction. Did you uh, reuse any uh, code from that from your uh, previous um, game? Nothing specific. I might be posting kind of snippets, especially. And a lot of the algorithms, I definitely like the pseudocode to kind of help folks. Oh, okay. That'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, um, that's that's excellent and it's an amazing game and, and I definitely recommend it I did pick it up yesterday of course and so it's great great talking with you really good to meet you meeting in you. person yeah this yeah because I never get show. to you know I see you as a name on the screen but never in person and you guys can see see me but um, right. interacting like this is is totally different it's so much fun especially in a, an environment like this where we get to celebrate your game excellent. yeah it's excellent well, thank you so much yeah thank you so let's move on. Uh, so we've got Sokobu and Deep Stone Catacomb. Actually, this extension cord is amazing. This is great. We finally got it working. We, uh, it took a little while to make it all work, but uh, Tanya's still struggling because it's a mess of cords and, and equipment, but we're figuring it out. So right now, Sokobu is in here, and we've played this on the show quite a number of times. And this is by Andrew Davey, of course, uh, famed of Boulder Dash. And um, it's a really interesting way this is made, if you haven't seen this on the show. Each line, everything you see on here, except for the, the main character, I believe, is all done play field. Because each line is a different color, and so he draws the screen and gets all the different colors, you see the shading going down the screen, all with different play fields by just filling in different four pixel blocks. Um, so he's able to make like the this type of wall and then the extra walls and then the blanks, all which is play field of different colors and achieving like almost like a CRT effect. If you know uh, RGBs on C CRTs, I mean, this is a CRT, but it's like a CRT on a CRT. Um, it's drawing one, two, three lines that make up different colors as you go. So it's really, really creative. And of course, Deep Scone Catacomb, which we did conquer on the show, and it is not out yet. This is just, this is like, it, oh, it's got in development. That's very cool. So you can tell whether it's uh, come out yet. And this is by Mick Muse, and we did conquer this game. I have. I beat this game, and it is unbelievable. I can't wait for this to come out. I was actually expecting this um, to be released this year because I thought he'd be um, completely done. But maybe has a little bit more to do. Maybe artwork, um, but I expect that one to be out really soon. Um, and then we've got a John Champo game, Champ Games, Lunar Lander, um, still in development. We did play this on the show, um, and Panic Rooms. And this I have not played on the show. I've not gotten a ROM of this, so maybe it's coming soon if this is um, if this is ready to be played on here. So I'll have to check this out. Um, I'm gonna pop it in now because <laughs> I've seen Lunar Lander, but I have not seen Panic Rooms. There we go. So got kind of an exclusive here for people who aren't at PRGE. Oh my goodness, he can move slow. Run, run, run. 
Um, so this is by Michael Brown. Uh, you're a Ruth, rich, ruthless Texan oil tycoon who stepped over everybody uh, and everything to get where you are today. Uh, in this demo, you can play the first floor of the mansion only, so it's just a little bit done. Some rooms contain small, small sub-rooms called panic rooms, which I'm in right now. So I guess you have to kind of time it. Oh, no, he's very fast. And apparently you've been shot in the leg because you can move like a slug. So I think you have to time it to get out of the room when he's far there, as far away as possible. Um, so I have to run, 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 run. Go, 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 go. And, oh my God, what do I do? Okay, <laughs> game over. I only have one hand. I'll play that after. Um, in a safe green zone, you can move slightly faster at the expense of your stamina bar by holding down the fire button. Oh, that's what I was missing. Okay. So, but we'll get back to that, and I'm sure we'll be playing it on the show soon enough. Now that there's a one-level demo, I'll have to get in touch with Mike Brown. And, of course, Robo Mechanic, which we just... Oh, yeah. Okay. Just fiddling with the cord here. We're making it all work. Robo Mechanic, which we uh, finished the levels that were done. Um, he is still working on getting, putting all the levels into it. This is by Christoph K.K. Klukseg. Hope I'm getting that right. I'm sure I'm pronouncing it wrong every time. Um, so we finished, uh, let's see. So it is up to world. Ooh, this has more worlds. Ah, so he's added in some extra worlds for the PRGE. Maybe I'll just take this cartridge home, Hey, eh? No. <laughs> so there's more worlds to play now. That's excellent. I think we finished up to level G um, uh, when we played it. H? Yes, H. I think. No, no, no. F and G, because he switched um, F to be G and G to be F. F was Boulder Dash, and then G was the final level. Yeah. Um, so he's added in uh, H, I, J, K. Let's go to K. Uh, X is random. Um, yeah, I don't think I've seen this one. So there's a little, a little couple extra uh, levels in this one, so that's excellent. This is a definite must-buy when this comes out. It is unbelievable. So Thomas Jentsch is uh, helping um, uh, Christoph Klukseg uh, pack in the rest of the levels. Are you, are you uh, I'm laughing at? Uh, are they uh, laughing at my pronunciation? No. What do we have? They're my just, head being cut off. They're just saying that I'm a trooper. That's thank you very much. <laughs> And what is that? James is going to up, up, up. bust out a rom, rom of a rom, rom dumper. dumper. Yeah. Oh, I'll just slip it in. My, I've got a rom, du rom dumper in my pocket. I'll just slip it in there and put it back. <laughs> and I think we've come to the end of the 2600 games. There's some 7800 games there. Isn't that 7800? It's a 7800, but it plays 2600 games. It's oh, backwards compatible. Gotcha. Just like uh, modern systems are now with like the PS4 and, and the Xbox. So right over here we have Arkanoid uh, by Matthew Smith. And you know, I'm not too into the 7800 scene, so I don't know these developers too much. And of course we talked with the developer of Baby Pac-Man earlier. Um, and there it is there, and we'll have to play it a little bit and compare it to the, uh, the arcade version at some point. I mean, we have it too. We have a copy of it. We bought it. Yeah, because it's a, it's an amazing game. You have to pull out my 7800. Yeah. One of them. <laughs> See if it works. Um, oh, and there's Dion. So we should. Um, we're going to wrap up the. Um, do you want to talk to Michael at all, or we'll video him after? We might do that after. Okay. And um, maybe we'll let you. I need my shoulders. Yeah. And he's pretty busy right now. Yeah. So right. we're. we're I will go on me, and we'll do a little wrap up here for now. Actually, we'll go. Uh, we'll get the Atari H in the in the background.
the sign there. Yeah, that works. Yeah? You point it. Yeah. It's good. Am I there? Thanks. So thank you for joining the live stream from Portland Retro Gaming Expo. We're going to be talking with Dion, who has patiently been waiting there for a while, quite a while. Uh, oh, he might be leaving. Um, and uh, we we'll might be going live. So, uh, yeah, we're almost done. We're just wrapping up now, and then we'll, go, we'll get to you. Um, so we're done for now. We might be streaming. We might be going over to uh, Good Deal Games and Homebrew Heaven over there with Michael and uh, chatting with him about his new releases. Um, but Tanya needs her shoulders to have a little bit of a rest. And we're going to do a, a proper recorded interview with uh, Dion about his new games here. So thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully the video and audio worked. We are well enough. Well enough. And we're recording it locally as well, so we're posting um, the proper recording of it um, on YouTube later. So uh, we'll see you later. Just keep a watch out. Woo! There's Tanya. Thank you, Tanya, for helping out today, carrying all this crazy equipment. There you are. <laughs> oh, it's pointed very high. It's okay. There we go. Um, and so just watch for any uh, pop-ups from Twitch if we go live again. So we'll see you in a bit. Bye-bye.